Okay. Okay. We will go ahead then and switch gears and talk about um, the W2C side of things um, coming from the payroll side. And <clears throat> what we've done is we've actually put together a checklist. Um, so hopefully um, this will, um, you know, help you and or your districts through the process. Um, really, you know, it's it's pretty self-explanatory I think um there's you know some steps we're gonna we're gonna um walk through and basically it's to me almost like you know when they create their actual you know w2 submission files um and their their reports and their forms so think of it kind of um in that light um but under the w2 corrections chapter, which is under reports um, in our documentation. We've actually, you know, have the chapters um, for, or the sections within the chapter for each of those options. And we're gonna go through all three of those options, but there is um, a bullet ahead of um, those options um, that provides the checklist that we're gonna go through. So if you click um, on the word here, it is hyperlinked to the checklist. And this is, <clears throat> excuse me, the checklist that we're going to go through and the steps that uh, will need to be taken if there are any W2Cs that need to be um, issued. Um, the first item in the checklist is um, making sure that the W2 configuration checkbox is checked or unchecked, um, depending on if your district um, is submitting their own um, files or you at the ITC is submitting those on their behalf. And the only reason I kind of threw this in here is some ITCs are um, sort of working hybridly, so to speak, where they're submitting some of their um, districts files and then some districts are, you know, submitting, you know, some on their own. So just to make sure that that checkbox is marked appropriately. Um, you know, I added that right in at the very beginning so that for whatever reason, if you are, you know, an ITC that's um, turning those on and off so that those um, files get created correctly in the right format, we make sure that it gets, you know, it's, it's set appropriately when you start your W2C process. Um, so for those of you that, you know, it's an all or none sort of thing, it's probably set correctly. And this, you know, won't need to be changed, but I didn't want those that are, you know, half and half or doing some or not the other for that piece to get overlooked. All right. So then um, the first step then is to create the W2C records. Um, so I'm going to hop over here to the instance and under reports. You'll see now we have the W-2 corrections option. And the very first step that we're going to talk about is this W-2C records option. So here is where you're going to create then, by clicking the create button, the um, corrected information for something that would have been originally um, submitted differently. So maybe it's you know an amount that's wrong. Maybe it's a, a social security number. Um, a name, those sorts of things. So anything that needs now needs a W2C record created, you're gonna you know start typing any part of the last name, the first name, the ID, um, find that employee. And then we do want to make sure that we have the right year selected. So I'm going to change that back to 2023. And when I click create um, correction record, it pops up then and allows me to enter um, all the original information and then the corrected information um, that I need to now, um, you know, create that form um, and that rec that uh, submission file for. So one piece I wanted to point out, um, and we do have this in our checklist, um, when you do create a W-2C record, no matter how the original 
um, SSN was entered, it is required. So if you're not, even if you're not fixing um, an SSN um, for an employee, you do have to enter in the original SSN. So that's really the only, you know, required piece um, outside of, you know, everything else that you're wanting to correct. So we have this um, as a bullet here. The very first step when you create the correction record is to enter that original SSN. And we have, you know, this is a re this is required. If you're correcting then an SSN, then obviously you're going to enter also enter something in the corrected SSN field. So that tells the um, Social Security Administration that this was reported incorrectly. Now replace that with the corrected SSN. Okay, so I'm going to switch back here. So again, you would enter that original SSN. Whoops, I'm sorry. In the 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 um, original SSN field. If you're correcting an SSN, then you'd also enter that corrected, that new number in the corrected SSN field. Um, you'll see below then, you have all the um, boxes um, that um, you're able to add records for to correct that information as well, state and then cities. So uh, again, outside of the SSN, you're only entering information in boxes that need to be corrected. So the original and then the corrected. Okay. So once you have those records, I'm going to cancel out of this. Once you have those records entered, you can see that they appear then in the grid, um, in the W-2 correction records grid. So you have your normal options. You can view, you can edit, and you can delete. Okay, so that's the first step. Going back to our checklist, this then outlines creating those W2C records. The next step then is to create the report. So we've entered information and now we need to check that information. So going back to our instance, you can see here we have three records that we've created, corrections, and I, now I'm going to go to that W2C record and submission option. And you can see here, you know, again, I, you know, this looks very similar, I think, to the regular W2 options. So you can see we have three options within the W2 correction report um, option, report and submission, I'm sorry, the report, the forms, and the submission. So now, as we just, you know, said, mentioned, we've created those records. Now we want to verify all the information is accurate. So you have your normal options to create, you know, change the report title. Um, you can sort these in the, you know, normal um, uh, sort options. So if you'd like to change that, you can. You can start each employee on a new page if it's easier for you to review that way. Um, again, make sure that your year is um, correct. So in this case, it's 2023. You can generate the report for specific employees. So if I want to, you know, just look at one particular employee, I have that ability, just like you do um, with other reports. And, you know, I'm sure you're all familiar um, with that option. You start typing the name, find it find the employee, and then you want to click add to move that down to the selected employees grid. Um, by not selecting any employees, I'm selecting all employees. So I'm going to click generate report. And I already have this report generated. So if I switch over to my next tab, you can see here that this is a report then for all of those records that we've entered in the W2C records program. Um, so my three employees are listed here. And you can see then the, the information that I've um, entered um, as corrections, you know, is listed on their report and I'm able to check that. Okay. Pretty easy, right? Pretty self-explanatory. Nothing, nothing too crazy. So once you've um, in step two, once you've 
check that report, make sure it's, you know, everything looks good. We're going to move on to step three, which is creating the forms. So I'm going to switch back over here to my instance, and I'm going to stay right in that W2 um, re corrections report and submission area. And I'm going to switch my option here to be forms. So we went from, you know, report to forms. And now you can see, again, that um, my options, you know, slightly change. I don't have a sort option. Um, I want to make sure that my year is correct. If I'm generating this um, for whatever reason, just for a specific employee, I can do that. Um, but then I'm going to click um, generate forms. I'm going to generate this, the forms for all three of my um, employees that I have created records for. So just like W-2, um, the W-2 process, you can see an informational check uh, uh, box appears and it says generated forms can be found in W-2C form output files and uh, view. So again, it's sending them then to that files output area. So if I go to reports, W-2 corrections, W2C form output files, you can see here then that it sent that file that we just created to this output area. And it allows me to do, you know, three different things here. I can generate the file, um, or I'm sorry, download the file and, and then submit this um, for printing. Um, I can also send this to the file archive or I can completely delete this if it's, you know, was created in error, um, I can start over. So if I click on the download file, I actually had this open, I thought, and maybe it's gone now. I'll just click it again. We can see what the form looks like then. Maybe we're, what's happening here? <laughs> Let me see, maybe it got hidden behind something else. Sorry, here, there we go. It's on my other screen. Okay, sorry about that little hiccup. So here then is what those W2C forms look like. Um, so you can see it's created the forms then for those uh, three people that we had um, created records for. So this is the, you know, the W2C form that's, you know, right from the IRS. We have the ability then to send this to the file archive. And I did, you know, make mention in um, the checklist, you know, once the form is created and you've submitted that to the file archive, you know, please, you know, districts should be going out and checking and making sure and verifying that that file is truly there. Um, you know, it is going to be helpful in the future to maybe reference back to. Um, so, you know, it doesn't hurt to, once you've clicked that button, go out and double check that and make sure you know, that file is truly there so that, um, you know, it'll save some headaches in the future if, if it's gone and um, it's needed for whatever reason. Okay. So that is creating um, the actual forms. Um, the next step then in the checklist is to create the, the submission file. So again, keep in mind, this is only creating the submission file for the Social Security Administration, the um, you know manner that the districts correct their information for the states, the cities um, that might apply, that you know isn't something that's being handled on um, on the system. They'll need to do that how they you know have always handled that in the past. So this is strictly creating the file for um, the SSA. So again, we're going to go to reports. W-2 corrections, W-2 report and submission. And this time we're just kind of moving down the list here. We're gonna create or select submission. And you can see then that because I've selected that option, again, my, my screen changes slightly. 
um, you have your um, sort options. You want to verify the year is accurate. And just like they need to select some um, submission specific options when they generate their w original W-2 file, we're going to you know, have those same options available when it comes to w creating the W-2C submission file. So the kind of employer, the type of software, the preparer code. Now, um, the this option here is the file being resubmitted. Um, yes or no, it defaults to no. If for whatever reason, um, the Social Security Administration reaches out to you and says, you know, this file needs to be resubmitted for whatever reason, they usually send a letter. Um, in the letter, they have um, this wage file identifier. That, that um, you know, in that particular case then, we would say, yes, this file is being resubmitted. And then we'd enter the number that's included in the letter um, in the wage file identifier field, okay? So if it's not a resubmitted file, W2C file, then we, we would select no. And again, that's you know the option that's selected by default. And then you'll see that wage file identifier field will disappear. Um, it doesn't apply when it's not a resubmission. And then we're gonna enter the name, um, phone number, um, of an extension if that applies, um, of fax number, Again, that's not required, but you can enter that if, if that applies. And then the contact um, email address. You'll click generate submission file. And then that creates then that submission file that the district then can upload to um, the Social Security Administration. Okay. Or if you at the ITC um, are submitting that on their behalf, then that gets moved then into the ITCM and we'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, um, on the checklist, we do have you know all the different options you're gonna select that we just talked about. Um, uh, where was I going? I lost my train of thought. Oh, um, again, when that um, file is created, it does get sent to the file archive. So again, you know, double check that that file is out there um, and it's, you know, it's it's able to be accessed and, and all as well. Um, if for whatever reason, I'm going to go back to Reports, W-2 correction, W-2C records. If for whatever reason, you sort of need to start this process over, um, once you've created the submission file, it actually um, uh, you know, sets the records then um, to be, and I didn't create the submission file, but it's gonna submit, it's gonna uh, set these flags the processing flags to true. So you really can't touch them, okay? If you need to start over um, and, and touch these for whatever reason, you actually can check the check boxes and then click this unprocess checkbox and that will set those then back to false. So I can actually do this real quick. It's not gonna take long. Once I generate this submission file, I've created the submission file. If I go back to reports, W2C correction, W2C records, you can see here they get, you know, they're out of my grid. Um, if I change the processed flag to true, that filter field, they come back, but you can see all I can do with them is, is view them. I can't touch them at all. If I would need to, to make some corrections and kind of start the process over, you can check the check boxes, as I just mentioned, and click unprocess. And that's gonna then, if I set my filter field to false, that makes them now 
unprocessed and I you can see then the options um, to edit and delete are also available for me to, to, to do. Okay. All right. Just wanna make sure, okay. Are there any questions um, about anything we've talked about thus far? I feel like we're kind of flowing through this pretty quickly. So if there are any questions, again, interrupt me, stop me, um, put them in the chat and I'll be happy to, to answer them. Um, one, um, the final step then under the W2 submit C submission um, step is to actually compress this file. The Social Security Administration does recommend that the file be compressed before it's it's uploaded to them. Um, so, you know, to to be compliant with grant their wishes, so to speak, um, you can actually just locate your file, right click on that file, and then select the option to send to a compressed zip folder, and that will then compress the file, and then you can you know use that file, that compressed file, to upload um, to the um, to BSO. Okay. Step five then is kind of you know um, you know if the districts your districts are submitting this file on on their own, then they follow you know, the steps in um, six and seven to actually send that file, you know, up to the, um, to BSO. If you're submitting the files on the, your district's behalf, then um, we're gonna switch gears here in a minute and we're gonna step through the process to submit that file through ITCM, okay? So if the district is submitting, you know, their own file, then it's very similar to you know what happens next when they you know submit their original w2 file they're going to log into the um, business services online website um, and they're going to process that correction file through accuage so just make sure that there's no errors everything looks good um and then they're going to log into um you know business services online when they're ready to file that file and then follow the steps then to upload that file, um, that correction file to them. Okay, and we have the, you know, steps that, that are very similar to the W-2 um, upload process, you know, outlined in the checklist. Okay. Are there any questions as far as the W2C process, um, as far as if districts are submitting those files on their behalf before I switch gears, or on their own, I'm sorry, before I switch gears to ITCM um, and you at the district, or the ITC, I'm sorry, is sub are submitting your district's files. Okay. All right. I noticed that there that form file was 12 pages long. Are there multiple pages for each correction? So yes. So it actually has the instructions um, attached to it. Let me go back and find that form here. So it it's 12 pages long because it actually gives the you know it's the actual form right from the IRS. So they include these um the information to the the uh, instructions so that's what makes the page so long also do you know they need special forms to be printed on um so you're gonna probably you're going to um upload the the correction forms are you talking about the submission form or the actual form themselves tanya you're probably talking about the form yeah i I, yeah, I'm not 100% sure about that, but my understanding is, you know, this is the form, you know, it's, it's copy, um, it's the W2C form, so you can print this right on blank paper. Does that help? And, and somebody, you know, can correct me if I'm wrong. I, 
you know, you, these are the actual W2C forms, um, you know, that are right from the IRS website. So we've made that, you know, that that form be the form of the IRS. So that should be that should be acceptable. And then you're going to submit the, the actual submission file electronically. So really, there's not anything when it comes to the W2C that you're sending in, so to speak. OK, great. Um, Jake had a question. Is there a process to replace the original W2C? I'm sorry, original W2 with the W2C in the W2 archive so that employees can see the correct version in the kiosk? Um, that is a very good point. I will make note of that. I don't, I'm not um, thinking that we have an issue for that. So I'm going to make note of it and we will get something um, created to look into that. Um, okay, perfect. I hope that I answered everybody's questions. I'm trying to go through the chat here and follow along. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. I was, that's, you can just print them on blank paper. Yep. All hey, right. Lori. Yes. I don't know if we want to put this somewhere in there, but I've noticed before I've had actually personally had to get a W2C because of like some wrong local tax information. And when you go to, because before I used to always do this on SSA.gov's website, help people, because you can do it directly on their Correct. site. Yep, you can fill in the form. Mm -hmm. When you go to try to do just local tax corrections, it it just goes, hey, we don't really care. Like, it's just like, it won't even let you generate one on their site. So, it, um like that so i don't know if we want to look into that and like put a little disclaimer like hey if you're just correcting local tax i i don't really think the irs cares about that now the state of ohio might mm -hmm. i you know like especially if the local tax that you're correcting is a school district tax then obviously right. they would i don't know right. if they care about the municipality taxes or not but the feds at least i mean why would they they don't you know it doesn't apply to them yeah. It doesn't apply to them. So that's okay. just like a, you know, I know that for sure that it doesn't apply to, to the feds. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. I will um, take that back to the team and we will look into, I'm just trying to think through like, I know you don't want to give too much legal advice. I guess my my thought yeah, I guess is we if wouldn't it have says it of that on before, if it says it on the SSA.gov website when you're generating it, though, yeah. it feels safe. It feels safe to me to include it if yeah. you can, you know, confirm that. And then the other thing is, should we put a ticket in if we wanted your issue to get state submission? I'm pretty sure OBG will take the W2C yeah. electronically. Yeah, it's not a huge deal. I mean, we can mail it to them, but I'll put a ticket in. Yeah, just to... yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah, I would, that would be helpful. Okay. Okay. Um, Jill asked, can a district make multiple corrections and just create one correction file? Absolutely. So if, if for whatever reason, um, So, okay, so maybe I'm not, I just want to clarify your question, Jill. Multiple corrections, meaning multiple, like, boxes incorrect for one person? Or are you saying multiple people with corrections on one correct, and then file one correction file? Okay, so, you know, if if a district has multiple corrections to make on multiple people, then they're going to create one record for each person, for each employee that they need the correction to be made for, and then they can create one submission file. So the process, you know, that we just went through, they're going to create one record 
run the report, make sure everybody's information, the corrected information looks good. And then they're gonna be able to go then to W2C corrections, W2C report and submission, click submission. And this is gonna generate a submission file for everybody that was included in the records area and on your report. Does that help? Now, you know, W2 corrections come, can come in at various times, you know, so if you have already created your submission file for say these three people, and now you find out, you know, at the district level that something else needs to be corrected, you know, obviously that file, if that file has been processed, then you're gonna go in and basically, you know, start the process all over for that new correction. So you're gonna to go to reports, create the record for that employee. Whoops, W2C record for that. These would be gone because you've already created the submission file. Um, and then you're gonna create the new record for you know, the correction that you just found out about and go through the process for that, that new correction. Okay, does that, does that make sense? All right. Okay, so going back to our checklist, um, you know, step five here, we do, you know, say, you know, if your ITC is submitting your information on your behalf, then, you know, follow, you know, your instructions to get that file, that information to them. I know that varies from ITC to ITC, or if districts are submitting their own files, you know, proceed with step six, um, you know, through N7 and finish the process. So for you at the ITC, um, I know we have, we do have, still have a handful of ITCs that are submitting their district's information. Um, we're going to jump then to ITCM. Um, so it kind of, you know, is the file's been created. Now we need to um, submit that using a different means so that all of your district's files, correction files that you're submitting, excuse me, on, on their behalf can be merged into one file. So in um, the ITCM documentation, we have a W2C merge, oops, sorry, get this to the top here. Um, and it, it, you know, if you're familiar with the W2 process, which I'm sure you are, the W-2 correction process is virtually the same thing, okay? So, I have no idea what happened, but it just disconnected for a hot second, I think. So can somebody just give me a shout out that they hear me and see my screen okay? I or, can't see your screen, but I can hear you. Okay. Let's try this again. I am not sure what happened. I'm so sorry. It, like We can see your screen and hear you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. It was like a split second. I. I lost everything. Um, okay, so if you already have your district set up, you know, from the regular W-2 um, submission process, which you probably already do, then you probably don't need to, to create anything here. But I would just, you know, go through and verify those districts that you have corrections um, to be submitted, you know, those files you need to, to submit, those districts are, are here and everything looks good. It doesn't hurt to to look at that one more time. Once the dis districts are in place, then you're actually gonna go down to this W2C merge option. And then we're gonna step through 
um, some steps here. You can see the, the three tabs along the top here um, to actually you know, create that merged file. So here is where you're going to then add those districts and then attach those district correction files. Um, this is the area we're gonna do that. So to add a new district and then upload their file, you're gonna click new item. And this allows you then to select that specific district from the dropdown. That's why you know, your districts have to be created first, otherwise they're not gonna appear here in the, the district dropdown to be selected. So then I'm gonna enter the calendar year, 2023. I can enter a note if I'd like, if you'd like, um, you know, maybe the employees or um, something that might be helpful in the future. And then you have two ways to actually um, get the file into, you know, attached to this specific district. You can drag and drop the file. So if I have the file on my computer somewhere, I find that, I drag it and drop it into this area. I can also upload the file by clicking here and then browsing on my computer to find that file. Okay. So once I have the district selected, I've entered the year, a note if I would like, and I've uploaded the file, one of, you know, either way, I'm going to click save. And when I do that, then that places that district and their file in this grid. I'm going to have to do that then for all the districts that I have corrections files for. Okay. Now this grid is helpful. Um, you can, there's a couple different things you can um, do within this grid. I can click on the edit option and it allows me to make corrections for, you know, those areas that I just completed. I can delete the file from here if I, you know, need to delete it for whatever reason and start over, or I incorrectly added a district that and their file that shouldn't have been included. I can click delete, delete right from the edit option. I can also download. If I click here, I can download the file. Okay. So once I have all of my districts and their files um, attached, you know, or, or uploaded, I'm sorry, in, included in this W2 correction district entry area, I'm ready to move on to W2 correction merge. So here's basically where I'm going to double and triple check that all of my like submitter information is correct. So this information is pulling from the organization. So as long as the organization information is correct, really the only thing I should need to have to enter is my submitter user ID. Um, the reporting year, my federal ID number, my employer information, my contact information, this is all pulling from the organization, okay? So if that information is correct, again, open those, you know, click on those down arrows and open those, expand those areas, double and triple check, make sure the information is correct. I'm going to enter then my um, submitter ID. And once I um, click off of that field, I am able to then start my merge. You can see that there's a, in the lower left-hand corner, there's an option that says that the the merge took place. And if I click then to the final tab, the W2 correction merge results, you can see here is, you know, going to be a listing of that merged file. Okay. Um, any prior files that I've created um, are going to be listed here as well. So just make sure that you know, if those haven't been deleted out, and I, I don't know that you really want, would want to delete them out, um, unless there, it's an error for whatever reason, you know, make sure you're grabbing the right file. Um, you can verify that. If I click on the um, edit option, 
that allows me to, to look at the information that's contained within that merge file. Um, so it gives me the date, the time, um, who created the username, um, the calendar year, my federal, all my ID information, contact information. Um, and then down at the bottom, it gives me all of the district information that's specific to this submission file. Here's um, an option that will be, you know, you probably might want to click um, so you can retain some kind of um, record for fu the future, and that's this extract results. So this extracts a file then in Excel and allows you to like, you know, basically keep something for your records. So this shows exactly what information is contained in that submission file. Again, I have the ability to delete this. I mean, I need to start over for whatever reason. You can delete um, when you're in this edit option. I'm gonna cancel out of that. Um, if everything looks good, you've you know uh, extracted your results so that you have something for your records. Then the last step is to click the download option. And this is gonna actually download the, the submission file, that correction file somewhere on your computer, however your computer's um, defaulted and, and set up. And that will allow you then to then take that file, again, compress that file, because that's how the IRS um, prefers it. The Social Security Administration, BSO prefers it. So right click on that file, compress it. And then that file then is what you're gonna upload, um, basically using you know those same steps that we just that are in our checklist um, in steps six and seven. You can run that file through AccuAge to check it um, and then upload that file to the BSO. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so there's a question about what is the process box for? So, just like we talked about with um, in state software, um, in the ITCM application, there's also a processed box. So if I have created my submission file and I go back to um, the, the box, uh, I'm sorry, the W2 correction district entry um, area, it says process. This means that they've been, um, there's been a file, a submission file created basically. So if I need to um, unprocess this, them for whatever reason so that I can create that submission file again, then I can click the edit option and I can uncheck this box. This allows me to do something with this file again. Because once I've created the submission file, Basically, I can't touch it, uh, which makes sense, right? You don't want to be messing with um, information that you've already created the submission file and possibly uploaded to, um, you know, through BSO. So if I click this un this uh, process checkbox to unselect that, that allows me then to do something with this record. Um, with it being checked, I can't touch it. Okay. All right. Hopefully that answered your question, Jill. Um, if it didn't, please, you know, feel free to unmute and, and ask. Um, there's another question. We have a district that needs to correct FICA numbers on a 2022 W-2. Can we create a W-2C with, w, with 2022 data? Um, yeah, I absolutely. Um, you should be able to go back to um, W-2 corrections, W-2C records. And when you click create from the drop down, you would select the 2022 year. Okay, obviously you have to enter your employee and, and that will give you the pop-up box to then generate the correction record. But yes, this... I, I'm just curious, before I am so confident, 
um, I'm thinking that we wouldn't have put those check those uh, years back so far if we are not able to um, create it for a different year. But let's just, I'm just going to plop some numbers in here just to test it. And save this. And I'm going to go to W2 Corrections. I'm going to go to Report. And I'm going to go to the Form. And I'm going to select 2022. And I am just going to view the form real quick. I want to see what it looks like. I want to check on that. Just, I don't want to um, tell you incorrectly. I'm just making, want to make sure that I'm worried about that this was revised in 2023. I'm not sure what changed, but I'm sure that, you know, we're always using the 2023, the current form. Um, and I don't want to tell you incorrectly. So after I was so confident that I know that the system will allow it, I just want to make sure that it is going to um, correctly report the information, like, you know, when it comes to the submission file and, and so forth, um, that nothing's changed in the file layout that's going to cause them errors um, when they go to tr go to upload it. So let me, um, does anybody else have that situation? I can get, definitely get you an answer, Diana, but if, if others need it, then we can um, I can even add something to the documentation. I'll add a little blurb, you know, if it's if it's acceptable to go back prior to 2023 or if it's not, um, we'll we'll put a little statement in the documentation so that way everybody um, is aware that, you know, it can or cannot be used um, for prior years. Would that be helpful? Okay. And Diana, I'll definitely reach out to you so you, you have that information right away. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions? I apologize because we have went way over our normal hour. Um, but hopefully you have found this um, helpful and. Hey, Lori. Yes. Uh, I have a question, I guess, for everyone, because we kind of have a weird uh, situation. Okay. Uh, we have a military spouse who is adamant that she is exempt from Ohio tax. So the district stopped the deduction for her because, um, you know, so it wouldn't withhold. And now it doesn't show the taxable wages on the W-2. And now this employee um, thinks it should show on the W-2, uh, but, or show the exemption on the W-2 as well. Has anyone, has anyone ever run into this with a military spouse? Go by your silence that no one has. Awesome. Say it again. I I did have this one situation. So it's a mili It's someone who's married to someone in the military. Okay. And they're claiming that they're exempt from Ohio tax. So that when yep. the district set them up, they just stopped their Ohio tax completely. Mm -hmm. And then, so. Now on the W-2, it's not showing any taxable wages for Lake Ohio. And also the employee wants it to show that she's exempt from Ohio taxes on the W-2. 
it doesn't seem like there's a way to do that. Yeah, I don't. Okay, so I had that. I did have. That's what I thought. Um, I I got a ticket and I got distracted. And I apologize. No, yeah. So we had that. I had that. And I did it in classic. I don't remember the very last part of that being necessary, like showing that the person's exempt. I just didn't. I think you know in classic, I just put like exempt on the dead screen. And just it never went on to the W-2. So I do know it's possible. We used to make the employee give, uh, this is when I was at a district. We used to make them give a letter so that we had it on file so we could be like, hey, this is your fault, not our fault. Right. But um, so yeah, it's a real thing. I just don't remember. We never, at least when we did it, and I did it for years, I don't remember needing to show on the W-2 that the person was exempt. Okay. And I mean, at the how would you even do, how would you do that? You yeah, know, yeah. like, because yeah. again, so knowing we had an issue with this, not a military spouse, but somebody else was saying they were exempt in an EFP. We tried to get it to show mm -hmm. and it, the SSA and OBG rejected the file because basically it showed resident like Ohio in the state box, but didn't have wages or withheld. And SSA and OBG rejected it. And so we had to remove the Ohio so that the state line showed nothing. So okay. I don't like, I don't know how you would even do that without getting the file rejected. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's, and at this point, I'm like, this is what you wanted as the employee. You got to deal with it. You know, yeah. Died. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I agree. The employee can't dictate how the W two form should look. It just is. I thought I'd ask because our district was asking us, and okay, it's going to be one of those. You should contact a accountant or a lawyer about this situation. Well, hopefully, what I said about like, I, and I not in state. You can't do this in state software, but in EFP, you can like directly modify like that state field what shows, and we tried that, and that didn't work. So. I right. just think even if even if we could do that in here, it's not it it there's nothing that we can do. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, great. Thank you. I just wanted to see if anyone else had any advice or had seen this before. So great conversations. And honestly, like uh I appreciate all of your input on the 1099 section and then this conversation on the W2s. Um, I think, I think Lori's internet may have got her again or whatever's going on with Zoom. So um, I figured I'd hop back on to wrap us up. But thank you all so much for attending today. Thank you for your time. I know this one is a little bit longer, but I hope this was helpful. And uh, have a great weekend. And we'll see you next time.